even got caught into this argument once with anarchist groups, friends. They claim we, we hate states, we want small communities where in a self-transparent way we organize our lives, we run our lives. I told them on two counts I'm opposed to you, even on three counts. First, but are you aware that, I told them I love things when they really function like that, but are you aware that in order for this to function, you need a good, efficient state to, to, to organize the complex background? Like, okay, you organize distribution of electricity. Fuck you, where does electricity come from? It has to be rendered available. Education, healthcare, and so on and so on. So again, the second point, I even doubt to provoke you a little bit about this uh, local democracy, this non, even my good friend Alain Badiou, I think, goes too much into this, that our ultimate goal should be not representative state, but living local democracy where people are immediately present, self-organizing, and so on and so on. Now I will give you a very brutal argument, but it was made once by Trotsky in a very intelligent way. Uh, namely, to be brutal, would you really like to live in such a shitty local democracy situation? Every afternoon you have to go to some stupid meeting, how we organize the education of children, how we distribute water, how we do this, that. No, sorry, I want to live in a nicely alienated state. By nicely alienated, I mean it's invisible there, out of your control, but it delivers, it functions. Water is here. I don't want to debate uh, every afternoon where water comes from and how. I want water to be here. I want healthcare to be here. I want energy to be here. Again, this is the big problem today. We don't need local democracy. Of course, when it functions, it's nice. But isn't it that all the big challenges that we have today are challenges which need even more than state power? We will have to organize ourselves even at a transnational level. Look, Jean-Pierre Dupuy, uh, the catastrophic theorist, he told me that as a member of some fucking European uh, committee, he was in Fukushima two days after uh, the uh, earthquake, tsunami, all that. And he told me that for one day, a little bit less, Japanese government was in a total panic because they thought that the pollution will be so strong that they will have to evacuate the entire Tokyo area, 30 million people. If this were to happen, can you imagine where will they put them? The rational solution would have been, of course, to ask Russia to give part of Eastern Siberia. I, if I'm brutally rational, that would have been the only solution. But how can you do it? No mechanisms to do it or what? You see, we have to confront these problems and I'm sick and tired of this local, no, we need larger global organisms. This is my big problem with anarcho-syndicalism. Okay. Show me one, I just cannot imagine one example of how it worked, taking over the state, replacing the state whatsoever. Give me one example of anarcho-syndicalism in power. In what sense, I will immediately, in what sense are you questioning power in general just opposing it or do you think humanity could be reorganized so that we all live together without power i will put it in another way the challenges that we are facing today biogenetics the only way out the only way to control the horror of private companies or states doing it making terrible experiment is with large, very powerful state or another agency control, limiting it, limiting it, and so on and so on. Very brutal control. Otherwise, horrors are already happening. I hear all the time from my friends who have friends rumors about how, you know, screw atomic arms. Now we are in that level of biogenetic arms, how to manipulate brains so that you don't... So that's my first problem. Second problem, ecology. I cannot imagine how to fight it, how to confront ecological challenges without a mega large 
decisions, or, uh, acts. Millions of people will have to be moved and so on and so on. And I just want to know, uh, yes, it functions the way you said, at the local level, communities and so on and so on. But even, isn't it that even for those communities to function, somebody has to provide the basic service, which means water, electricity, education, and so on and so on. For example, in today's confused situation, I think the most dangerous thing is to abolish universal obligatory state education and to say, oh, each community can organize its own education and so on and so on. Society will explode, rich people will become even different. So you see, you see what I mean.